In today's video, we're going to be making fluorescein and then talk a little bit more in depth about it. Fluorescein is an extremely interesting compound because it has so many uses across multiple industries, from chemical research, medical uses, studying earth and plant sciences, and even in cosmetics. For this reason, it has been considered safe and even added to the World Health Organization's list of essential medicines. Though, some people still do have adverse reactions, so be wary. You might have even experienced fluorescein without even realizing it. Commonly, it is used in things like eye examinations to check the health of your eye. Also, possibly seen in cosmetics referred to as uranine or DNC yellow number 8. Or maybe you've even seen it in the dye in something like antifreeze. But enough on that, let's get started. The three main starting materials I am using are phthalic anhydride, which is commonly used in the production of dyes, resins, and plastics. Next we have resorcinol, which is commonly used in skin treatments to treat things like acne, psoriasis, and other skin disorders. Finally, we will need a small amount of concentrated sulfuric acid as a catalyst. However, in most papers I have read, they actually use zinc chloride instead. We start by adding 0.8 grams of phthalic anhydride to a 50 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask, followed by 1.2 grams of resorcinol. The amounts can be scaled up or down depending on how much you want to make. Just make sure to keep about a 2 to 3 ratio of phthalic anhydride to resorcinol. Next, we add 3 to 5 drops of concentrated sulfuric acid. My hot plate recently broke, so I'll be using an electric stove and a pan. However, this shouldn't be too much of a problem, except I will have to monitor the heat to make sure it doesn't go too far over 200C. As soon as we turn on the heat, we see the reaction start to take place. We can see a red oil forming, and I have listed the reaction that is taking place. There is actually multiple things going on here, but without getting too much into it, there is two Friedel-Craft reactions that give off a water molecule, then a Fischer esterification giving off another water molecule. But that is a very basic explanation of what's going on. As the reaction slows down, we might have to stir it around a little bit to get everything to react. Once it is cooled, we can see the fluorescein crystals on the side of the flask and a red thick oil at the bottom. Our next step will be to dissolve the fluorescein, and we start by adding water. Fluorescein is not too soluble in water, so only a small amount dissolves, which is the yellowish color that we see. Next, we add in our sodium hydroxide, which I bought as drain cleaner. This will convert the fluorescein molecule into a salt known as sodium fluorescein through an acid-base reaction and sodium fluorescein will be our final product. You notice the product is red, and this is due to the concentration of fluorescein and the way that the light moves through it. Higher concentrations of fluorescein cause the light to get bounced around so many times, we see it as a red color. Once it is dispersed back into water, however, it will turn that nice light green yellow color we're expecting. Once it looks like no more will be dissolved, I empty the flask into a jar, and just to see how much this stains, I show my gloves after I poured it. Finally for fun, I start by making the famous floor scene vortex, and I've literally spent hours playing with this and I've honestly still not gotten bored. Next, we will see a flat bottom flask and play with some additional drops for viewing gratification. Anyway, that's all I really had to say about fluorescein, and if you like this video, make sure to subscribe for more future content. As always, a big thank you to my Patreon subscribers that allow me to continue buying small pieces for new videos, and you can see their names here. 
then a list of videos that I'm currently working on. And until next time, have a great rest of your day.